How many Hollywood actors can you name that have appeared in both DC and MCU live action films? Well, one of them is Florence Kasumba, a Ugandan German actress who's in the Black Panther universe, in Marvel, in the Wonder Woman universe in DC. And she made her return to the MCU in the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, episode three. Let's talk about her. Welcome back to Comic Power. I'm your host, Comic Killer 72 Welcome to another episode of The Quick Flip. This is a program where I go over comic book industry news in a short period of time. Please subscribe to this channel and also click on the notification bell as well. It will remind you when new videos come out. All right, now let's get right into it. To answer your first question, one of those actors is Lawrence Fishburne, who has both appeared in both DC and Marvel. In DC, he appeared as Perry White in the Superman universe, and he defected over to Marvel, is now playing Bill Foster, which will become the superhero Goliath. Lawrence is best known as Morpheus from the Matrix trilogy. He also has a reoccurring role on Blackish. He has a career that goes back to 1970. And then there's Dajman Hansu. I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly. He played Korath the Pursuer in Guardian of the galaxy and he also played the wizard who gives Billy his powers in Shazam. He started his career as a male model and he had a breakout in Janet Jackson's Love Will Never Do video. He also appeared in Amistad where he has the famous line, Give Us Free. He originally hails from Benin, a small country in West Africa. And he's had a great career as both a model and an actor. And then there's J.K. Simmons. He played Commissioner Gordon in the Justice League for one hot minute and he's reprising his role as J. Jonah Jameson in the Spider-Man universe. But this time it's in the MCU when his previous incarnation of the character was not. J.K. is a terrific character actor. He first started getting popular in the HBO drama Oz and he won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in the movie Whiplash in 2014. Now let's give all the shine in the world to Florence. She made her first appearance in the MCU in 2016 in Captain America Civil War. She's a member of Crown Prince T'Challa's security team who's traveling with him. And she has the scene stealing line, move or you will be moved, which she says to Black Widow, but she's told to stand down by Prince T'Challa. It probably would have been one of the best fights in the MCU that we never got to see. And then in 2017, she makes her appearance in Wonder Woman during her origin story. Florence plays a character named Akantha, who is a senator in Thermoscale. Then she returns in 2018 as a full member of the Dora Milaje and we find out her name is Ayo, a character from the comics. The Dora Milaje made their first appearance in comics in Black Panther number one, the 1998 version by a black writer named Christopher Priest, who's been working in the comic book business for a very long time and most people don't know who he is. But the Dora Milaje, that's his idea. He created it. She also shows up in Infinity War and the big battle versus Thanos' goons. And most recently, she steals the show by appearing at the end of the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, episode 3 called The Power Broker. And this makes sense that the Dora Milaje or a member of the Black Panther universe would show up in the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Remember back in 2016 at the end credit, Bucky goes to Wakanda where Captain America arranges a deal with King T'Challa to work on Bucky to try to get that mind control out of his brain using Wakandan tech. That's where they call him the White Wolf and Shuri does all the work to try to make that right and make him whole again. So he has a very long history of the Wakandans so he would call a favor for them to work on this issue of trying to find out who the power broker is and trying to crack this case with the flag smashers and who better than Ao of the Dora Milaje. I expect to see Florence's character play a bigger role in Black Panther 2, which is scheduled to come out in 2022. The Eo character got a chance to be a headliner in the Black Panther series, World of Wakanda. It was a six issue miniseries that came out in 2016. Eo meets another woman named Anika during their training during the Dora Milaje, and they form a romantic lesbian relationship, and they lead a team called the Midnight Angels going on very, very dangerous missions. You probably missed this important six part miniseries back in 2016, so I suggest you go find it on eBay or something. The entire creative team of artists, writers, and editors was all black men and women, and it won an Eisner for best miniseries. Now back to Florence as Akantha. The Wonder Woman franchise under Gal Gadot was still continuing, so it's possible that she could return to play this character in the future. And I would welcome that. And there were some people who are speculating that she secretly may be Nubia, which is Wonder Woman's secret black sister, but that is not the case. She clearly is Akantha. Akantha and Nubia are not the same character. So if you had any ideas of saying that, then that's just not the case. In the future, hopefully they will introduce a Nubia character. There's too much to unpack there in terms of the origin of that particular character. I'll talk about it in another video. 
Now, here's some background information about Florence. She was born in Uganda in 1976, an East African country, but she was raised in Germany. And she went into the theater and got training starting at around age 12, where she got involved in numerous stage plays. This is where she was discovered by American casting agents, which led to her being cast in the 2016 Civil War movie. And of course, the rest is history after that. At the time I wrote this, she's 44 years old and she looks great. I can't wait to see more of her. She's a fantastic actress. So tell me in the comment section, what do you think of Florence's career so far? What do you think of the character she's playing in Black Panther? And would you be offended if this character was an LGBT character like she is in the comics? And can you name any other actor that is currently active in both DC and Marvel at the same time? If you haven't seen it, Amazon Streaming has a new web series called Invincible. It's based on the comic book of the same name, introduced by Robert Kirkman, the same writer as The Walking Dead. It's the story of a young man who is the son of a high-powered super being named Omni-Man, and when his powers kick in, he goes by the name of Invincible. Some people are comparing this story to the boys because it asks the question, what if Superman was evil? In Invincible, his dead Omni-Man is the Superman stand-in. And in The Boys, the Superman stand-in is Homelander. But those are the only similarities. I think that The Boys is a deconstruction of the superhero genre. And I think that Invincible is a love letter to the superhero genre. And Invincible is pretty good. I suggest you do watch it. But warning, is extremely violent. The violence is way over the top. So if you're watching it with your kids or somebody that's not into that type of thing, it may be a big turnoff for them. So please. Please be careful who you show this to because the violence is way, way, way over the top. You know the drill. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, give the thumbs up, and share these videos on social media so other people learn about the channel. And don't forget, I do sell comics at my eBay page listed here with a link in the description. One Stop Thrift and Comic Power are run by the same guy. That would be me, Comic Killer 72 I have 100% feedback, by the way. And once again, thank you to my subscribers and viewers who support Comic Power. Until next time, this is Comic Killer 72 for Comic Power saying, bye-bye.